Hello there everyone, uh, welcome to another uh, update video for Lip Sync Pro. I'm sorry it's been a, a little while since I've last done one of these. Uh, this update has has been quite a long time coming. Um, this is finally the big Auto Sync, well, Auto Sync 3 update. I mentioned in the last update video, it was quite a while ago, uh, that this was also the new version of Auto Sync was meant to be coming in that update. Uh, and as you can probably tell, it didn't. Um, so the problem with the old version uh, was that on Mac OS it is now almost completely broken. Um, I haven't been able to figure out exactly how many people are affected by this, but I've had a lot of people saying it just flat out doesn't work for them on Mac OS. Um, I, it works on mine, and I know of at least one other person who it does, but Either way, that's not you know it's not an acceptable state for the product to be in. So this was caused, I think, by an update to Mac OS uh, quite a while ago that made the um, underlying sort of technology that powered AutoSync, a library called Pocket Sphinx, uh, made that stop working. So what I wanted to do was to not tie this new system to a single library like Pocket Sphinx. I wanted it to be kind of flexible and extendable in the same way that blend systems are for the rest of Lip Sync. So later on in this video I'll do a kind of more in-depth look into how this new system actually works. Um, if you're not interested in that, that's fine. I'm gonna what I'm gonna do first is just a quick demonstration of the new system so you can see what you're actually gonna be getting if you're not gonna be diving into the code. And then feel free to close the video after that. So what I'm going to do to start with is just open up the uh, example Gettysburg clip. So in this example all the phonemes were placed by hand. I think it was actually made before Autosync was a thing. Autosync was never able to get results this good out of it before. Um, if I run the old version, which is still available, like this, you can see the kind of results whoa, we were getting out of it here. Four score and seven years ago our fathers brought forth Which, on this continent a new you know, nation. It's it's not good. <laughs> we'll compare that to the kind of default output from the new version here. And just see what this looks like. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. So there's still some, you know, the odd thing wrong with that. But I think that's much, much better than the previous version of Autosync. Okay, so if you're wondering, right, once I've downloaded 1.5, what do I need to do to get that? Um, the one change, basically, between... Autosync 2 and this is that you now need to have a transcript in order for this version of Autosync to work. You can do that the way you could before from uh, clip settings and you know typing out a transcript in here. Uh, or to make it make it easier now, the clip editor from this version will actually look for a transcript in a text file with the same name as your audio clip. So when you open up Gettysburg.wav here. If you've got a text file like this with a transcript in it, it will automatically load that in. There will also be other ways of getting a transcript, and that, that leads us on into the kind of big change, really, in the structure of Autosync now, which is that instead of being a single kind of black box that you run, it's now, as you might have guessed from the, uh, the menu here, it's split into modules. So modules in Autosync are kind of individual bits of code that can create something about your clip. So it's no longer just limited to phonemes, it would be possible for Autosync to generate emotions if you if you came up with a module that could do that. For most people you can ignore most of this, like you can if you want go in and create uh, your own sort of presets by mixing and matching modules and changing all the settings and everything yourself. If you want that flexibility you can absolutely dive in and, and do all that. But if not, you know, there will be a few presets, I've done three so far, there will be more as well, um, that give you something like, in this case, just this new system, or these ones which give you the uh, equivalence of the old presets from Autosync 2. 
So if you don't have a script for your audio, or you don't want to have to try and manually transcribe them all, uh, there will be modules available for getting a transcription. Um, at the moment, the only ones I've been able to kind of get working reliably have been cloud-based. So what I'm going to have, and, and there's still a lot of work to do on this before it's released, so not all of this can be sort of demonstrated right now, but we're going to have Google Cloud, IBM Watson, and Microsoft Azure. And these are all cloud-based services that you can sign up for, um, use your, give a, a token or a login and password, and have Autosync get a transcript from those services and use it. Now, what probably won't be available from when 1.5 launches is an offline, sort of local transcript module. Um, this is something I want to look into, and it's something I do want to have available, because I know, you know, these as good as these cloud services are, uh, they can cost money if you use them over a certain amount, um, and they require a bit of setup and, and all this. Um, the good thing about this new module structure, though, is that when I make a new module, I don't have to update LipSync for you to get it. I can just package them up and put them in the extensions window. In fact, a lot of these, I think, will be downloadable instead of coming with 1.5 when it launches. So, in a nutshell, that is the new system. Mac compatibility, much better results, and this kind of whole new, much more flexible and, I think, better workflow. So there's still a little bit to do on this update before it's ready to launch. Um, I want to streamline some of this usability stuff, um, and I've actually some of these modules still need implementing as well. Um, but once that's done, I'm expecting it to be launching in about mid-March. There's going to be a 1.45 update, which will come before that, which has just got a few bug fixes and other kind of minor things in. But after 1.5, it's then on to 2.0. <laughs> So LipSync 2 will be a, a complete rewrite from the ground up, really. Um, I've start, already started on it. Uh, I've been working on it for a while. AutoSync, in its current form, will probably mostly transfer over to it, but a lot of the rest of it, the runtime stuff, is completely new. It's nothing to worry about. I'm not going to be kind of deprecating LipSync Pro 1.x anytime soon, uh, but that is that is the very long term for LipSync really, there's a, a totally new version that will be built on all of the latest Unity technologies and, and hopefully stay compatible with Unity for you know years to come. So more information on that will be coming eventually, but for now, uh, look forward to LipSync 1.5. If you've got any uh, suggestions or comments on, on sort of modules that could be added, new systems you'd like in there, or Actually, especially ways of getting transcripts in, um, because I know that there's a lot of different people use LipSync, and a lot of you will already have scripts for your dialogue. Um, if there's a specific format uh, or a tool that would be really useful for for easing that that part of the process, then please let me know because that would be really useful for um, streamlining this this whole process. So thanks a lot, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.